Okay, as promised earlier, we're going to look at object properties. We're just going to look at one object's properties, the button object, and you can apply these same principles to all the other objects. So I started with a blank project here, 500 by 350 pixels, and I've gone to View, Workspace Layouts, Compact. Now I'm going to go to the Insert menu and choose Button. From this dialog, I'm going to choose the Browse for File icon here, I'm going to click on that, and now I'm going to choose a button from our gallery. Blue rectangle is a good one, so I'm going to click on it and press OK. Again, I'm going to press OK in the button dialog. You can adjust the properties in the button dialog too, but I prefer to do it here via the properties inspector because I can view the changes in real time. Okay, so let's move our button down onto the canvas. We're pulling open our Properties Inspector here, and there we go. Let's get started. As you can see, there's a variety of options available for the button. Make sure your button is selected so that the proper options are popping up here in your Properties Inspector. So let's rename our button, My Button, and the file will leave for now because we've already chose our button. Um, the type, you have two choices here, Standard and Toggle. This is a standard button but in some cases you'll want to use a toggle button such as a check box or a on off button or a radio button in that case you will see this extra option available to set it for up or down state or in other words on or off okay so let's put this back to standard and we'll take a look at the text here we can change the caption here in this little area and we can view the changes in real time so i just put my own text in there and we're just going to take a quick look at one interesting thing about the file function while we're here. If we click on this little ellipsis, uh, that's the three dots and the tile here at the end, we can actually select another button at this point, for example, blue rounded, without changing the default text. So that's very handy. But at any rate, we're going to move along here. We've got uh, the text set, and we're going to take a look at the font area. As you see, this is expandable and contractible. I like to leave mine open because I like to use the individual areas here and do this in real time. So for example, the text, let's look for something uh, a little more interesting. There you go. That's No, maybe that's a little bit too, too decorative, but there we go. Something like that. And then I'm going to change the size here by clicking on these little arrows at the end. Much better. All right, we've got a bold option and an italic option, and we've got some other alignment options here. In this case, our button text has come out a little bit low because of that Y there. So we're actually going to go to our offset option for the Y axis and pull it up by a pixel. And I'm going to go to the ops offset for the X axis and set it over by a pixel. Actually, I think I'm going to come up one more pixel. No, I think that was okay. No? You can sort of um, do this by eye. That's why I like doing this in real time. There we go. That's great. Okay, so I, I moved it by a couple pixels using these offsets, and if you fool around with those, they'll become self-evident how they work to you. So, uh, The alignment option is similar to a paragraph alignment option. So if you had a, a series of buttons, for example, in which the titles varied in length and you wanted them to align to either side, for example, left or right, you could set this up and then use the offset feature to... oops wrong one, set and use the offset feature here to back the text back onto the button and you would be able to get that right alignment for the title set vary in length. But in our case, we're just going to set this back to one and we're going to put this back to center. Okay, so that takes care of the fonts and the offsets. Now in the state colors area, we can actually set up the different font colors for the different button states. For example, when your mouse is over it, and when you're pushing down on it, for example, the down state is when you're clicking down on it with your mouse. Um, the highlight state is obviously going to be when your mouse is over top of it. So if we put in our up state, for example, we'll click on this little arrow here and we'll select blue. That's going to be our normal color. In our highlight state, we'll set it back to white. And in our down state, we'll set it to a darker color blue. Uh, our disabled state our button here is not going to be disabled, but we'll set it to gray anyhow. And if we preview the button really quick by pressing F5, you can see here 
that our font color changes are made active. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Now let's take a look here at the additional options left here. The attributes options uh, pertain to the, first of all, we can select the highlight sounds here. For example, if we leave it on standard, those highlight sounds that we chose earlier, the default object sounds in the project settings audio settings area, will apply. But we can also turn them off here or add custom sounds. So if we wanted to add a custom highlight sound from our gallery, we could click on the file here and go into the effects folder in our gallery and choose one of these, for example. And you can audition these in real time. You can press OK and it will be added to your button. And if you preview now, you'll see that the sounds are indeed added. Uh, we can set a custom cursor here, for example, hand, arrow, etc. We'll leave it on hand. And we can set up the tool tip. I'm going to go ahead and type in here. And if we audition or preview, you can see that when I hover over, our tool tip has been added my button okay so let's go back in here and the last few things we've got here you can set whether the button is enabled so you can disable it here and you see it turns gray um, that's because the disabled state of the button in the button maker was set to gray or we can set it to true and we can also set the visibility we can set it to false or true and that's to hide your button at the beginning of the application if need be certain applications call for that we can also set the position of the button here numerically, which is kind of handy, as well as the width and height. So we can actually increase the size of, the, of a button right here, numerically. It's very convenient. And the final area here is the actions area. So we can actually go here and click on the little ellipsis and add actions to the various states of our button. It's very handy. So that's the object properties. You can take these same principles from the button and apply it to any of the other objects. The only other thing that I would like to stress here is that if you prefer dialogue-based interactivity with your objects, you can double-click an object and go to the Settings tab and set up all the same options we set in the Properties dialog, the text, the offset, the alignment, the colors, etc. Everything that you saw in the Properties dialog is also present here. For example, you can set the Actions in the Actions tab, in the Attributes tab, you can set the position and size, the sounds, the tooltip text, and so forth. So, users of Autoplay Media Studio 4.0 especially will appreciate this dialogue-based interactivity. Personally, I prefer to interact with the Properties Inspector because I can view the changes in real time. You go ahead and experiment and see which one suits you better. So that concludes the lesson on object properties. As you can see, every single object has a wide variety of properties that apply to it. Objects such as the video object would have properties like looping and controls, whether you want them to be visible, and so forth. So I encourage you to go through the different objects and experiment with the different properties.